So the next gentleman is also running for office coming up. But he's not just running for himself. He's running for a whole state. What's, at, what's on the line is the ballot line in Texas. If they don't get 5% in a statewide race, then Texas is not going to have automatic ballot access. And they're going to have to do ballot petitioning, and it's going to be expensive because they're big, big, big. It's going to be one of the most expensive petitioning drives that we have to do. So it's absolutely important that this gentleman in the race he's running for, for Texas Railroad Commission, gets that 5%. And so he's going to need all of your support. Um, let's welcome to the stage Dr. Mark Miller. I, I would be remiss if I didn't say howdy, y'all. There's uh, three things I'd like to talk to you about about what's going on in Texas this afternoon. Uh, let me couch it as the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I'll start, start with the bad that we just heard about, which is ballot access. Uh, the last several go-rounds, uh, we've maintained our ballot access by getting 5% in a statewide race, usually a judicial race, in which uh, there was no Democrat running because it's a really, Texas is a really red state. Uh, the legislature changed the rules a little bit such that now we have uh, six judicial races, but all of them have a Democrat running. And most of them also have a Green Party candidate. So the sort of uh, threshold of getting to 5% is a little tougher this go around. And so that's why we Texans are really focused on what can we do to get our numbers up so that we can get to that 5% threshold. We've been getting at about 3%. I ran for Texas Railroad Commissioner uh, two years ago and got just over 3%. So it's a reachable goal, uh, but we got some things to do. There is one office in Texas that is on the ballot, an executive office that's on the ballot every two years. This is the ugly part of the Texas Railroad Commission. Now, the Texas Railroad Commission has an interesting history, but what you should know is that it has nothing to do with railroads. Zero to do with railroads. It did 125 years ago. It was established as really one of the first progressive era uh, uh, regulatory agencies. But starting in the 1930s, the Texas Railroad Commission was giving authority over the state's oil and gas industry, or as we like to say, our all business. And, um, and in fact, during the 60s and 70s, um, well, up, up to the 70s, the Railroad Commission controlled the price of oil in the world by restricting production of oil, oil in Texas. It was the previous OPEC. A lot of people don't realize this. But it gets even uglier. Though there are three commissioners, they are all answerable to the voters. Texas has a plural executive. These are commissioners that do not report to the governor. They report to the voters. They are on the ballot. Yet, even though oil and gas is the state's most important industry, these commissioners, or excuse me, voters in Texas Less, fewer than 5% of them know what the Railroad Commission does, that it actually regulates oil and gas. The legislature doesn't want to change the name. You have to wonder why. I tell people it's interesting that the Railroad Commission is the only regulatory agency that Republicans seem to like. And why do they like it? The Railroad Commissioners will openly avow openly avow being both champions of the oil and gas industry as well as its regulator. That makes us libertarians shudder because we know exactly what that means. It means we have an agency that is, after all it's Texas, pro-business, but it's certainly not pro-free market by any stretch of the imagination. 
So we need to get the word out. We need to figure out how to make the Railroad Commission better known, as well as figuring out how to get people to vote for a libertarian. This gets us to the good part. We have a great campaign that's been put together. We have a Texas delegation, and in fact a lot of folks back in Texas, ready to really do the work that we need to do in this standoff that we're going to have between now and November. Unfortunately in Texas, what happens is that the Republican candidate who's seriously flawed, you think Donald Trump's bad, we have our, our own Donald Trump, He's seriously flawed, but he will go silent because the runoff happened just a few days ago, and in Texas, if you win the Republican runoff, you pretty much win statewide race, period. The Democrat who's running hasn't even run a campaign. The only reason he won in the runoff is because he has a famous last name, but no relation to a very famous progressive uh, Texas politician. So we in Texas are ready to roll up our sleeves. We're ready to get to 5%. I'm personally not gonna be satisfied with 5%. Because I tell you what, if we got to 10%, they'd have to quit ignoring us. If we got to 15%, it would shake up Texas politics big time. If we get to 20%, we would be required to be a primary party. Required. If we get to 20%, we would be required to participate in the primaries. I guarantee you we'd have a lot of Republicans showing up wanting for nomination. And of course, we would let them. And at 25%, turns out you do not need, you do not need to win a majority in a statewide race to be elected. It is a four-way race. So at 25%, we just might have a Texas Railroad Commissioner who's a libertarian. That's what we really want to have happen. So any of you that would like to join the fight, we got a big party tonight. Come on by. I've got lots of information. Uh, anybody that's interested in knowing more about the Railroad Commission, I'm the first person to run for Railroad Commissioner who's actually written a book about the Railroad Commission. So come join us. We've got some great t-shirts. Pat Dixon, stand up. He's got one of our Give a Frack t-shirts, Vote Libertarian. We'll have those available. Come on up and join us and have some fun at the karaoke party. Thank you.